Good evening, everyone. We are thrilled you're joining us tonight. My name is Gary Morris. I'm the Director of Career Services, and it is a pleasure to be here for another exciting Imagine 2021 event. This is the third week of a five-week program focused on giving students and the class of 2020 the chance to explore career paths, find job and internship opportunities, network with alums, and much more. Check out the website for details. We're gonna throw the link in the chat. And by the way, if you complete three items on this weekly checklist, all of it related to LinkedIn, things you can tangibly do going forward, you'll be eligible for the drawing at the end of the week. The direct link is also going to be in the chat. And now I am really excited to introduce you to Sarah Viner, our guest speaker tonight, who will be showing us how to get the most out of our LinkedIn account as a power user. So if you attended yesterday's session, you were undoubtedly impressed with what Sarah had to say. She's born and raised in London, England, and spent the last 12 years stateside where she currently lives in Brooklyn, New York. After earning her undergraduate degree in English Lit from University of Washington, she began her teaching by teaching high school and middle school before transitioning into the world of education technology. Prior to joining the LinkedIn Learning Team, she gained experience in professional development, instructional design, and onboarding practices at EdTech Startups for Learning Management Systems and an AI adaptive learning company. She now works with higher education organizations to guide them in leveraging the power of LinkedIn Learning with their faculty, students, and staff. She likes to think of her career path as a jungle gym instead of a ladder. And she's driven by working for mission-driven organizations that she feels passionate about. Thank you for your time and expertise tonight, Sarah. We are thrilled you're here. I'm happy to turn it over to you at this point. Thank you. It's so great to be here. I had such a good time chatting with everyone yesterday. There were some fantastic questions that came in. Um, today, we're going to be diving into sort of the next steps of what we talked about yesterday, thinking more about the networking side and job searching side of using LinkedIn, um, which is a huge factor of why we exist. So certainly want to set us up for success on that front. And I'm sure we'll have plenty of time for questions. So start thinking of them now. More than happy to answer questions that are related to this topic or others within LinkedIn as well. And I always find that it's interesting to hear people's backgrounds. So certainly feel free to share thoughts as we go along and, and we'll respond to them as we go through the session today. And so I'm going to go ahead and give you a little screen share here. So if you were with us yesterday, um, you got an insight into really building out your brand on LinkedIn, thinking through your profile itself. And I always frame up our sessions with this idea that yes, this can be panicky, this can be scary. It's a tough time to graduate from university. It's always a tough time to graduate, but especially when things are unpredictable and unknown. So especially if you're a rising senior or you're thinking about the next couple of years of employment, we want to make sure that we're setting up for success to make you really one of the best candidates out there. Um, already you'll have a fantastic degree from Oswego to lean on, so that's great and it's a good place to start. But let's think about what other ways you can build out your presence to also help you on the, along that way. And yesterday we spent a lot of time talking about really getting into your profile itself. So all of the things that you can do to make your profile work for you. Things like adding a fantastic profile picture that makes sense and tells, who, tells everyone who you are, um, setting yourself up to make a good impression, using your, your uh, profile itself to build your brand professionally, which always seems weird. You think, well, a brand is you know, Nike or Vans, but how could a brand be me? Well, you are your own brand, especially if you're going into the world of work, you need to represent yourself as such. So, talk a little bit more about how you can do that and what ways you can connect with other people to help along that journey. If you weren't able to attend yesterday, it was recorded and it'll be shared out with you. Um, but if you would like to dive in, we also have a fantastic Rock Your Profile course. I'll be sharing this deck with everyone or well, with Gary afterwards and he'll share it with everyone. Um, and you'll be able to click on these. This is a hyperlink directly over to the Rock Your Profile course, which will walk you through the step-by-step -step of setting up your profile well thinking through things that maybe you hadn't had a chance to do before, like the name pronunciation is one of our newest features. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and um, making sure that you have a headline about me and a good summary and really using things like work experience, and volunteer experience to them, their best options there. So don't worry if you missed yesterday, there are plenty of opportunities to catch up. 
Um, but today we're going to think a little bit more about how to get hired, and how to dive into uh, mapping out your connections on LinkedIn. One thing I do want to rephrase from yesterday, so apologies if this is redundant to those of you who were with us yesterday, there is a big difference between other social media networks and LinkedIn. Whereas you might think about Instagram and Facebook and TikTok as more your personal life, LinkedIn is your professional life. So it's important to just go in with that mindset. If you don't yet have a LinkedIn profile, now's the time to set one up. You might not have a ton of information on it just yet, but you will throughout time. And it's way easier to start while you're sort of earlier along the path at university and you're not, you know, right before you're starting to apply for jobs, trying to add everything you need onto a LinkedIn profile in one go. So think about setting that up now and you can just gradually build it out. It's a process. It's always there to go back and edit. So you don't have to worry about putting things on and not being able to delete them or having it be static. It's a, it's a living space within LinkedIn. So always good to be iterative in that sense. So let's think today about getting hired and about networking. There are a couple of things that you want to know about using LinkedIn. And one of them is that you are absolutely advised to start building out your network. So one thing you can do is use the alumni tool. Um, referrals are super important. So the more people you know, the more likely it is you're gonna be able to connect with someone that can help you along your career path. Super easy to find the alumni tool. You'll just go into LinkedIn, look for Oswego, and then you'll see a whole tab that talks about alumni that'll take you over to this screen that I'm showing here. And within that page, there are some really fantastic options you can do. You can think through finding the right people that will help you with your career. So perhaps that is looking at people that work at the specific company that you are interested in working at. This is an example. I don't actually know what school this is. I thought it was Rutgers, but looking at the picture, it's definitely not. Um, maybe I will really want to work at Flexus. Uh, this could be an example of one that's not a real company. I think I remember this one before. Um, Flexus would be somewhere that you see 690 alumni have jobs. That is a really good amount of connections. So you can think about maybe some of those people would be interested in chatting with you or sharing some information. And let's think a little bit about what you actually want to do in terms of networking, because of course you don't just want to start um, spamming everyone that went to your university to try and get a job but there are some really smart ways that you'll be able to do that. And the reason you wanna do that is because 85% of jobs are still getting filled through employee referrals. So it's the number one way that companies recruit through people referring people they know. And I can certainly speak for myself. I'm, I have referred people to LinkedIn and we get, I can't remember how many job applications we get a year now off the top of my head. It's, it's a lot. Um, and so, of course, it's helpful to know that there is someone that can vouch for someone at that, at, in that, someone at the company that can vouch for that candidate. So it is a great way to think about trying to get a job. And I would definitely recommend that when you're considering referrals, try and speak with people that you know can speak to your professional self. So not just someone that you happen to see passing in a hallway at some point during your degree, but thinking through, well, I worked with this person, I was in a group with them, they were a TA for me and I had a good relationship with them. Perhaps they were a professor at some point, especially when you have adjunct professors, potentially they might work somewhere else that you're interested in working. So start making those connections in your mind and think about who might eventually be a good referral into a role. So where do you start? There's, there's a, a real mindset in terms of connecting with people and it's challenging because you don't just want to start connecting with everyone for no reason but it is definitely worth thinking about making your network a little broader, starting first with people that you do know well. So that can be your friends, that can be family. Right now, you probably have a lot of classmates that you've connected with. Think about whether they're on LinkedIn and start connecting with them now. Now you're just doing a group project with them, but you know, next year they might have a job that I would like to learn more about. And then also thinking about your teachers and professors now, as well as mentors. And as you start connecting with those people, this is important, personalize those invitations. So um, one thing that's really important is that as you're connecting with people, you just wanna make sure that they know who you are. When I receive network connections, I almost always know who they are, where I've met them. If I don't know, then I can sometimes glean how I know them through their position or through whatever title they say in their headline that they currently, where they currently work. But sometimes I get random connections with no information 
even if it's interesting, I don't connect with those people. So they might have a cool job at Google or a cool job at, um, at LinkedIn somewhere else. But if we're not actual connections and I don't know why they're adding me, I won't connect with them. And that's partially because I know that my network is valuable and important. And the more people I connect with that I don't know, the more I'm diluting my network so that I don't necessarily know who to reach out for for different things. So when you're in the other position, if I'm connecting with someone else, I'm always going to add a note. And things that I'll include in that note will be things like how I know them, whether we've worked together before, and um, perhaps they offered some kind of helpful information for me. If it was a lecture I attended, if it was a webinar I listened to, I'll tell them that that's how I know them and thank them for that. And then I'll also tell them why I'm connecting. So be transparent. If you want to connect with someone that works at a company that you want to work at, let them know. I'm super interested in this company. I'd love to get your perspective on how you found it working there. Um, and I have some questions about this and that department that I wondered whether you'd be able to speak to. Now, I will say, I think, uh, despite a lot of people reaching out with that sort of a question, it might not always be um, successful. So if you reach out to someone, you add a note, and you, they don't accept you, that's absolutely fine. Move on. Don't worry about it. But the more often that you do add some kind of note, some kind of description or personalization, the more likely it is that you will have a good, a good connection with them and, and a good information uh, sharing session there. We recently ran a session called Rockstars Live, um, which is sort of a little bit like Rock Your Profile with a little bit of information about how to really power up what you do on LinkedIn. Um, but we also interviewed some really interesting people. The person that we interviewed this last time, his name was Lauren Foley. Um, she's based out of Dublin, or she's actually just moved to Brussels. And she um, is a feminist blogger. And the reason we interviewed her was because she reached out to my colleague who was running the interview and sent just a really thoughtful note about what she got out of the session that she had heard from. Tell, told that person, Jen, a little bit of information. Said, you know, this is, this is what I currently do. I'm really interested in this and that intersection between these things. And I'd really like to get your perspective on these things. And also, here's something that I can offer you. And she said, if you ever have any need to discuss the ways to use LinkedIn, I'd be more than happy to speak to that because I'm a super fan of LinkedIn. So it was just a note that stood out, especially for that colleague of mine. I know she gets a lot of notes from different people because she does a lot of these sorts of sessions. Um, and it really stood out to her and put that person into a position that made her um, just a little bit more interesting in mind. So think about that when you're connecting with other people. And one thing to think about when you are connecting with others is who to prioritize. So super connectors is just a, a jargony term that we use here. Um, those are the people that your connections know. So yes, you know that person, but who do they know and how can they connect you with other people? So thinking through different people with larger connections, larger networks, those are probably the relationship builders that can give you a head start in your job search. And then groups are also a helpful part of that. So do start thinking about joining relevant LinkedIn groups where you can learn from like-minded professionals. And then just remember that within those groups, you can actually message group members. So that's another way to widen your network. Depending on what industry you're interested in going into or a company that you might be interested in working at, that's a great way to start building out the people that you know. I see some little chats coming in, so I will take a quick peek, but please do, Gary, if you want to interrupt at any point, if there are any good questions coming in, I'd love to answer them as we go. You bet one came in. Um, yeah. If you have a lot of people or just people mm -hmm. you're no longer interested in being connected to, mm. disconnect without it being awkward or uh, like yeah. someone's feelings or unprofessional. Good question. So I'd say in terms of personal experience, if I'm looking at my um, connections, the people that I sort of look at, I'm like, who is that person? I have no idea why I'm connected with them. Almost always they're recruiters. Um, and they often reached out to me with different sorts of opportunities, or perhaps they just connected with me because they wanted to have me in my connect in their connection sphere. Um, I always notice when you know there are other people that perhaps I'm new to working with, and they'll see that I have an, a mutual connection. It's almost always the network, the recruiters. So there, there are two uh, schools of thought on that. I personally think it's a smart idea to just keep recruiters in your field, especially if they start recruiting for companies that you're dying to work at. That's always great. And um, if you perhaps have any kind of questions for other people that you know, you might be able to connect them with that recruiter as well. So 
I would say, despite them being sort of random that you don't think, well, I don't really need that person in my, in my inner circle anymore, they could still be help, helpful further along the way. Now, otherwise, if there's someone that connected with you, you don't know why they connected, perhaps you accidentally accepted them um, and you don't really want to be connected with them anymore, you can just disconnect from them. Super easy to just remove the connection if you're on their profile and they don't get any kind of notification or anything like that. So if they happen to look up your profile, they would just see that you are no longer connected, but shouldn't be much of an issue in terms of the visibility there, hopefully. But remember that the bigger your network is, despite it being perhaps some slightly more random connections, the bigger your network is, the more likely it is that there will be someone in that network that can help you when you most need it. Awesome questions. Yeah, keep them coming. So think about who you can tap up for help. When you're thinking about the connections that you have or alumni that maybe you don't currently have a connection with, but why they might be able to help you, they might work in the job or the company that you're really interested in. So perhaps you graduate university or you're thinking about, you know, next month I'm gonna graduate and now's the time where I'm starting to look for a job. You may well want to get some inside information on the company itself. For me, that is extremely important. I've worked at, as, as Gary said in his introduction, I've worked at a lot of startups and then I've worked at LinkedIn and I've worked at the Department of Education. So pretty much the opposite of a startup, huge, huge company, lots of processes and systems and really excellent organization options. So from there, I might be able to shed some light on both sides of that coin. If someone connects with me and wants to know a little bit about working in a startup, I'll certainly be able to speak to the pros and cons of that. So that's definitely helpful when you're thinking about what sort of company you'd like to work for. And even if they don't necessarily have a perspective on that, they might be able to connect you with someone else. So perhaps someone reaches out to me who really wants to work at LinkedIn, but they're really interested in working on product. They want to be an engineer or a software engineer. I can't really speak specifically to that. I don't work closely with the engineers, so I don't know how the system runs on that side, but I sure do know other people that do. So I could connect them over to the right people. And that's really the power of some of those connections. And as you reach out, again, what do you say? Tell them how, who you are, tell them how you know them or how you came across their profile and be upfront about how they can help you. Just remember, people really love to talk about themselves. So don't worry about saying, you know, I'd love to get a quick phone call with you at some point if you happen to have 20 minutes. Usually I would say, you know, invite them for a coffee, less so now during COVID times. Um, but perhaps that's just some information that you think would be interesting to glean from them. Just let them know what you're looking for and, and hopefully they'll be open to just having a conversation with you. A lot will say yes, and especially if they're alumni. If anyone attended the session on Monday with uh, Heather who works at, at um, LinkedIn, she is an Oswego alum. And when I reached out to her to let her know about this awesome event, she was so excited to chat with alum again, or rather to chat with Oswego people being an alum. So it's, it's, a, it's a great club to be a part of. Don't be shy, ask for advice, ask for tips. Almost always will turn out well. And uh, Sarah, how do you evolve that relationship within LinkedIn? You know, so you wanna yeah. introduce yourself and, and be generous with mm -hmm. you know, praise about what they're doing and interested in their career path. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, related to the question in the chat, how do you go from just messaging to maybe a phone call to maybe a Zoom to maybe, you know, um, something that um, has a tangible result in terms of um, uh, maybe an internship lead or a job? Yeah. Or, yeah, absolutely. I'd say the most important thing there is to do your research. So unless you're talking to someone that works at a really small company, um, the, the options, the things that you can probably take away from just doing some research on their website, trying to learn about what opportunities exist there currently, um, and then going into the conversation with that information, we'd say that's your first step. So if you've already made a connection, you've sent them a hello note, you know, you've, you're now connected and you have them as one of the people in your network, what do you want from the next conversation? So do you want to have a coffee with them or, or have a virtual coffee with them or a quick phone call to ask them about something? What is it that you actually want from that conversation? So rather than just saying, hey, let's be friends, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to have a chat. You seem interesting. I'd quite like to you know, learn more about your life. Think about specifically what you want to get out of that conversation. Um, for me, when I left the classroom, I was a teacher um, uh, for a number of years and I left from teaching middle school, fifth grade. I knew I wanted to go into the education technology sphere in some way, but I was A, not sure what kind of companies I should be looking at. 
and B, I'm not sure that I would be qualified in any way. So it's really hard to think about, I'm just going to go in and hope that my skills transfer and not know exactly what that looks like. So I started asking around to people that I knew who worked with ed tech companies. And sure enough, a ton of different people had connections that they set me up with to just have a conversation about what they did. And I went into those conversations with, well, probably, I will be honest, some of the first conversations I had, I'm sure I didn't go in with this level of organization, but I should have. And as I got more into that process, I would go into those conversations with top questions like, how did you find you set yourself apart as a candidate looking for jobs without any really relevant experience or knowing that you were in the classroom? What kind of skills did you showcase that you had? Or, you know, this is, this was my degree and I'm not sure it really has a ton to do with the job that I'm applying for. So what sort of ways would you be able to spin it so that it seems like I'm really prepared for that? Um, especially if you're thinking about asking people about uh, companies that they work for or similar companies that they work for. One of the most interesting questions I always find to ask is, what do you think a really successful candidate needs to have to be successful in this job? Like, define for me who would be successful in that role. And they may or may not know, but I think they will surely have some ideas for sure. So I think it's really worthwhile messaging them, being upfront about the sorts of questions that you have, and asking them for a little bit of time and exactly what you want out of it. You know, they will be upfront with you as well. I had, um, after a, a Rock Your Profile session recently, I had someone reach out saying that they had really appreciated the session and that they were actually very interested in applying for an internship at LinkedIn at some point. Would I be willing to read a cover letter? Of course I was. That's, you know, absolutely something I'm more than happy to do. And especially with my English teacher background, I like to get nerdy on that front. Um, but she was really polite. She, I didn't respond to her I think within the first week or so because I didn't have any childcare. Um, and, and she bumped her message the week after in a really sweet way and just said, just bumping this in your inbox. I know you're super busy, but if you did happen to have any insight or, or input onto this cover letter. I'd be really, really appreciative, um, but no worries if not. So don't be shy about messaging. You know, there's a point where two or three messages in might get a little bit um, too stalky, but I think there is certainly um, power in that polite reaching out. So that's a, that's a great question, Sarah. So a few other things to think through is the power of an informational interview. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this to play clearly. Let's find out here. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Ah, it's opening another screen. Bear with me. So this is just an example of informational interviewing and how powerful those can be. And um, let me go ahead and share a different screen. Come back, Zoom Toomba. It's always in the way when I don't need it. Sorry, everyone. Okay, let me try ending this and see if that works. There it is. Okay, let's try this one. I told my dad I wanted to leave consulting. On top of that, leave Atlanta for San Francisco. I had a total of six months to get a job. So I knew if I didn't come out here on the grind, I was not gonna get a job. I would wake up at 6 a.m. every morning. I sent out probably 25 emails a day on LinkedIn to schedule coffee with people I thought were interesting. Probably had six to seven meetings for about two months. Seven cups of coffee a day is, is far too much caffeine for anybody. <laughs> when I went to these coffee meetings, I never once asked for a job. I strictly said, do you mind just sprinkling tidbits of knowledge for me? During that time, a lot of the rejection I faced was I would go to these meetings and these people wouldn't even show up. Rejection's inevitable, but all it takes is one. This guy knew what he wanted, knew what he wanted to do and took that step. About a week later, he used and gave me a call and said, hey, I have a contracting role, would you be interested in it? So I did that for a bit. Eventually that evolved. He's like, hey Rahul, uh, let's go out for a walk and talk. And I was like, oh man, he's about to fire me. During that walk, he said, you know, we'd like to offer you full time. I was like, this is awesome. And now that he's kind of my right hand man, it's been an amazing journey.
LinkedIn facilitated a lot of the connections I made and, and the connections I would not have ever made had I not had a tool like that. So it's just one example, and I would say, you know, six to seven meetings, uh, informational interviews a day might be a little ambitious, especially while you're still trying to get your degree done. This of myself, Sorry. I can. <laughs> you too, be quiet. Um, but from the same, in the same vein, it is certainly worth thinking about how you can uh, connect with people that will help you. So definitely get those who said, you know, I always ask for sprinkling of tidbits of information. That's not very specific, obviously, but. He's asking, he's not asking them for a job, he's asking them for information and advice. And perhaps that's just a story of how someone got where they are that's inspiring in some way. Um, or perhaps that's like really specific information about, hey, I once had this interview and I had no idea they were gonna ask me this question in the interview. And that starts to get your gears going about, well, if I got that question, what would I say? So any examples of those are always gonna be helpful. So do, do try and reach out to people from a, from an industry that you're interested in or connections that you think would be useful in that sense. And throughout this, um, this deck, I've got some different linked courses um, to LinkedIn learning videos. So I highly recommend this one on informational interviewing. If you've never done one before, if you've never asked someone for an, a so-called informational interview, which could just be a coffee chat, um, then it can be a little daunting. So take a look at that course. You have free access to LinkedIn learning. And remember when you do LinkedIn learning courses, you can drop those directly onto your LinkedIn profile and round out your skills that way as well. Talk a bit more about those skills here too, but that's a great way to make sure you're presenting yourself as a holistic candidate that way too. So we're gonna talk a lot more about this next week um, when we have a session around actual job hunting. We've got a good 15 minutes to go in and out of all of the job hunting search options. But I think it's important to point out these elements of job descriptions. When you're looking for different jobs, it's important to think about the company culture as I would say one of the number one things. So when you look at a company page on LinkedIn, you'll notice that they have a little description about them. They'll probably have pictures of the office or videos of the office. That tells you a lot about what a company is like. Um, I once knew someone who refused to ever work at a startup that had a pool table which is a challenge because almost every startup has a pool table, but they found that that was kind of more of a bro -y atmosphere that they weren't really interested in working in. And I completely relate to that. So I can certainly see that taking a look at different pictures and understanding the tone of the way someone spent the time to build that out um, is really important. And even if you find that there isn't a lot of information about the company on their page, that also tells you something. So perhaps they are less interested in setting themselves up as an appealing company than they are in getting an incredible product out, or maybe they just don't have anyone that works on that side of things, but it's worth knowing that going into it. And then the job description is really helpful as well. So that's gonna get into the work that you'll actually be doing when you start applying to roles. Think about what you're interested in doing and whether the job description melds with those interests and those passions. Now it's absolutely okay if some of the things in the description aren't things that you have any experience in. No one hires anyone knowing that they're gonna be on day one, the absolute ideal candidate. And especially for everyone on this call, pressure's off. No one hires a new grad knowing that they're gonna be the absolute best person immediately at their role. They know that there's some training that goes into it. But consider whether those things are interesting to you or whether the majority of that job description doesn't sound like something that would make you happy. That is important for a company culture and fit. And then overall, if that company is investing in the job description, if they're investing in the company culture description and understanding how it's built out, if their page on LinkedIn looks good, then you can assume that it's likely gonna be a company that invests in its employees. So that's a good thing to know overall going into it, where they're at in terms of their life cycle there too. And then super important to think about who you know. So you'll see you have these connections at this company or these alumni work at this company. That's your foot in the door. So as soon as you see people that you know who work there, you can reach out to those people and see if perhaps they have a chance at any time or a chance to chat with you. And then from there, you can apply directly to that job as well. So you don't even have to leave LinkedIn to do that, which is great. Again, a couple more recommended courses on this. Strategically thinking about how to search for jobs can be challenging as well. So there's a great LinkedIn learning course on that. And then let's say you have an internship somewhere, especially if you're not graduating this year, 
perhaps you're looking for a summer internship, how to turn that internship into a job, just like that video we saw, that is a really great course as well to think a bit more about what your next steps might be to. Definitely recommend both of those. I saw a chat come in, but again, my little, uh, oh, there it goes. Very finicky chat bar. Um, all right, awesome. So job alerts are also really important. And this is a little bit insane, but if you apply within the first 10 minutes of a job being posted, you're four times more likely to get a response. And I, I hope I didn't mess up the statistic, but if you apply to a job within three days, I believe it is, um, then you are uh, 11 times more likely to get that job. And that is partially because of hiring practices. So you'll know that sometimes people will post jobs and they'll start interviewing right away. And the best candidate that comes up first will be the one that gets the job. Now, some companies are getting better about that. LinkedIn is one of the companies that's really focusing on, high, on interviewing a certain amount of people before they hire someone. And that's important for just making opportunities more available in a diverse manner as well. But do know that speed is sometimes really important. So think through, do I want to make 100 more tweaks to my resume that probably someone's going to glance over in approximately 30 to 90 seconds? Or do I actually want to be speedier about applying to that job and hopefully get my foot in the door faster? Now, one thing to know about these job alerts is that you can do it on mobile and you can do it on desktop. So if you do it on desktop, you'll get email alerts for new jobs that are posted on LinkedIn that match your search criteria that you've set up. Or sometimes they'll be recommended to you from the jobs you might be interested in feature. The more you start clicking into jobs and the more you start um, applying to jobs, the better our search will get. So it's basically Netflix for jobs. You're going to get a little bit more um, specificity in the algorithm and we'll start to get to know you through that machine learning. So it is certainly worth going through that process, save jobs that you're interested in, like them, that'll help us as well. And from mobile, you can do it too. You can save that job search criteria in the job search mobile app, and then you'll receive a little job alert whenever you save that, which is another email notification that I'll send you periodically when new, posted, new jobs are posted around that too. So tons of ways to do it. One thing I'd say for now, in this sort of strange COVID time, Usually I would say look for things like a job title, a company, keyword, and a location. And recently I've been seeing most jobs being remote opportunities. So location might be a lot less important now than it was a year ago. So do keep that in mind when you're searching. Sarah, quick question. Yeah. Where do the jobs and the internships within the LinkedIn platform originate? Um, hey, is it question. just from LinkedIn members or does LinkedIn aggregate from other web platforms to, to pull this together? It's both. So we will have about nine out of 10 recruiters on LinkedIn and they'll post their job opportunities here first. Um, mostly if they're using other um, recruiting tools, they'll also have the option to post directly to LinkedIn from that recruiting tool as well. So it scrapes from other places and other platforms, but then it also is um, members that post specifically on LinkedIn when they're creating the opportunity. Got it. And related to um, applying for a job mm -hmm. with your LinkedIn profile information, um, how does that work? And um, uh, in terms of customization for job A, do you need to kind of tweak your profile to make it speak in that direction first? Or is yeah. it okay just to kind of use your profile to apply for lots of different things? Good question. Um, so it depends a little bit on the posting, I would say. With a job listing that has space to add a cover letter or any kind of notes, then I wouldn't say that it's super important to have everything on your LinkedIn profile perfect. Um, if it is the kind of opportunity where there's basically no space to add anything specific and customizable, then what I would say is it's worth, worth it to reach out to whoever that hiring manager is, whether it's the person that's listed on the opportunity or any connection there. Um, I've certainly been sneaky in my, in my earlier career and found out who the hiring manager was just by doing a quick search on their org system and seeing, hey, like this, this is the hiring manager for that. I can see on the job description that this role will report to that person. I'm going to reach out to that person to see if they can share any more information about it um, and whether I might be able to share some information about myself. Of course, that doesn't always work. I certainly had people say, thanks for reaching out. Great to know your name. Um, but please go through this and that system, which is always good too. They, they've seen your name, so that's one step forward too. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that your LinkedIn profile should be pretty universal. 
So while you might tweak a resume every time you apply to a new job, your LinkedIn profile should speak for you to any job that you apply for. So you don't want it to be too, too specific and only geared towards one opportunity. And that is just an element of really building out your profile to include all of the achievements and all of the various areas that you've been in charge of or responsible for. So that is one of the key differences between resume and LinkedIn, which is a great, great point and important to think about. Thank you. Yeah. And so Paige had a great question too about how to go about asking a connection that you've talked to in the past, if there are any opportunities, even though no formal jobs are posted. Great question. Um, I think it's a little subjective depending on how close that connection is. If it's someone that's a friend or a mentor or something like that, then I wouldn't be shy about it at all. Say, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in this company. Here's why. I'm passionate about this and that thing that you're doing. I think my skill set would be really phenomenal in this and that. Um, you know, I can offer this and that to this company. And I've noticed that no formal jobs have been posted. And the headcount hasn't gone up at all. But I was wondering whether this and that opportunity would be available at any point, And would you keep me in mind, basically? So even if there aren't any availabilities there at that time, they'll keep you in mind for something that does come up. Um, I've been in exactly that position for a small team in a company that I wanted to work for that had not got headcount in years. And there were some contract positions available and they thought of me when contract positions came up. So it depends what you're comfortable with as well, whether you want that sort of opportunity, if it's a short-term associate position or an internship versus a more formal job, that's, that's definitely up to you in terms of the opportunity. Um, in terms of asking connections that perhaps you don't know so well, it might make more sense to say, hey, I'd love to chat with whoever your recruiter is. And remember, there's an incentive for recruiters to hire people. So if they would be willing to connect you with the recruiter at that company, whether or not there's a formal job right there, it may well be worth it to reach out to that person to just say, here's my skill set, here's what I'm interested in doing, and I feel like that would be really useful to your company because of whatever it is. And from there, they can keep you in mind or perhaps just tell you about something that's already an opportunity. It's a really good question. Thanks, Paige. And Greg had a great question. Um, uh, he's saying when you attach your LinkedIn resume to an application, does mm -hmm. the, the hiring manager get a copy of the resume at that moment? Mm -hmm. Or do they get a link that might show updates you've made since uh, you submitted it? Yeah, good question. So it's the resume that you uploaded. So that is the downside um, of having your resume ready to go in LinkedIn. If you change it after you've already applied to a job, it'll still be the resume that you sent them. That's what they get at that moment. But in the same vein, you were already connected with that person if, if they did reach back out and let you know that they've got your application. So you can always send a version that says, actually, I added you know, these pieces of this project that I'm a part of here and, and I'd love for you to see this more recent version. So it's a good way to get in there. Good question, Greg. All right, so a couple of more items to talk about here. And this is a small slide for a lot of content, um, but the, the main piece here is that there are a lot of ways that you can get the inside scoop on different jobs that you might be applying to and interviews you might be preparing for. So the first thing to know is that there is a ton of information on LinkedIn. Things like company pages that you can like and follow, things like group influencers that you can be a part of or industries that you can get in. Those will all shed a lot of light on an area that you are trying to gather information on. So as much as you're applying to jobs, the more informed you are about those jobs, the more likely you are to be successful. So first think about companies and start following those companies that you want to be in the know of. So whether you want to work there or whether you're just really interested in what they're doing because they are leading the industry in it, follow those companies. And you can also set up job alerts on those companies too. So anytime they post a new job, that'll pop up for you. And then thinking through those influences, this seems sort of um, unintuitive in some ways when you think, well, I, I already followed Chrissy Teigen. I don't know what other influences I should be following here. But actually the big guns and in industries, so thinking through, you know, the, the Tory Burks, the people that have literally been female entrepreneurs for years, or people like um, Jeff Weiner, who was uh, the CEO of LinkedIn for years before this, or even more controversial figures like Elon Musk, as crazy as he is, <laughs> he has some really interesting ideas and he might be posting some interesting concepts around what they're doing at Tesla. You never know. 
So it is certainly worth following those influences that you think are going to be useful to your career and advising you. Um, of course, there's a difference between just pure entertainment and actually guiding your career in the right way. Um, so as long as you think that you're going to glean something from those leaders, that's always good. You might also notice that some people are better about posting things on LinkedIn than others. Some people are not heavily into LinkedIn and posting information there. So that's also absolutely fine. Um, good question, Tyler. It, I mean, again, it's up to you whether you follow a celebrity or not. Um, but I think, you know, I probably wouldn't use LinkedIn as much for following people that I'm just entertained by. I'd probably save you know, Instagram, TikTok, for that sort of thing. Um, but if you are interested in what they're doing, so if perhaps you want to be a famous Instagrammer one day, then maybe it does make sense to follow those people on LinkedIn. Up to you. You can always remove them later if you get bored of them. Um, and industry is also important. So there are groups that will really give you exposure to industry professionals, which you really wouldn't otherwise see. You can learn about new roles that way. Um, you can really learn about ways that you can share information as well. It's seeing other people posting on industries about certain things that gives you some ideas about the sort of content you'd like to post on LinkedIn. And then you want to be learning from them who are sharing their expertise. So I might follow some people that I think are really interesting in a specific industry. Every time they have a new um, um, initiative or a new program that they're working on and they post about it, it's going to inspire me a little bit and it'll give me an opportunity to dive deeper into those. And then you can also do things like upload your presentations or infographics. Um, you can do different options around um, joining those groups to really connect with professionals that have similar interests to you and start thinking about collaborating with them, whether it's just sharing with them, whether it's joining a discussion and adding a voice to a discussion and um, just keeping a pulse on those things that are happening in the industry. It'll keep you up to date on news. It'll keep you up to date on the articles on LinkedIn that are going to make you better at the job that you'll go with. And then lastly, Couple. there is the option to um, get into publishing. So if you want to start creating content and publishing that on your page, that's hopefully something you've heard of. And it might make sense to think about what sort of content you'd like to post on LinkedIn as well. So there's tons of inf interesting information on LinkedIn learning about that as well, about content creation. Um, but if you do start having an opinion or you do think that there's some interesting uh, content that you can add to the conversation, LinkedIn's a great place to do that, that people also learn about you when they go to your profile if you're applying to jobs too. Sarah, there's a, a question. Is there a, a best time, like um, sometimes um, there's a best time to um, call someone or uh, mm. get a resume in the mail, you know, avoid uh -huh. Monday mornings, Friday afternoons. <laughs> right. um, is there a best time to post something on LinkedIn that would get more attention? Mm. I have no idea. I mean, Anecdotally, I would say that evening time, people tend to be a little bit more active because they're not in meetings. And um, so kind of 4 p.m. onwards. But to be fair, we, we are such a global company that I don't think any time of day would ever make sense, you know, across the globe. For me, we, so I work on, in Brooklyn, um, but most of my team is out in California or in, um, we have a lot of people in Chicago as well. So everyone is kind of all around the world. Um, but I would say I anecdotally see things being posted more often from like 4 p.m. onwards. So that that's kind of a, a prime time in terms of the West Coast and the East Coast. If you're if you're more North America focused, that might be a good time to post things. Um, but I'm sure that plenty of people are on LinkedIn on the weekends, too. So I'll see if I can find any data about like the most liked um, content. Um, one other thing to remember is that we have algorithms that search that um, surface things again. So even if like in the same way that Instagram, you might not see the most recent thing being posted right at the top of your list. It'll depend a little bit on um, who you follow, who you like, those things will still come up higher. So the more you're posting and the more um, interaction you're getting on different posts, the more likely it is to stay uh, at the sort of top of your feed, not just chronologically. Great. Question. Um, and I love that question. If I follow a group, do I have to participate in conversations or can I just listen? What's best? Um, I'd say participate in the conversation if you have something to add that you think is well thought through. So don't just start saying, yeah, great point, <laughs> because that's just going to start busying up space and not add a lot to it. Um, but in terms of, you know, 
norms there aren't any any rules around what you can and can't post in groups so i would say as long as you feel like you've got something to add to the conversation and you think it'll um portray you well and people will be interested in what you're saying and the way you say it then certainly get involved and, and start participating but otherwise you'll learn a lot from listening to i suppose seeing <laughs> listening with your eyes okay so those are all the main things I wanted to talk through. And I know this is overwhelming, but truly the more sort of connections, the more net networks you can build, um, the better you start getting involved with the platform, with building out your profile um, and, and getting familiar with the ways to use it, the better you're gonna set yourself up. You're gonna be more successful as you're applying for jobs. And honestly, the, the job that you really want, your dream job is probably only one or two people away from Whoever, for whoever you're currently connected to. So that's a great way to think about growing your circle and why. And if you haven't already downloaded the app, make sure you do that. The LinkedIn Learning app and the LinkedIn app are, app are both fantastic. Um, a little addictive, but fantastic nonetheless. And, um, and that should hopefully help you on your way. And I do want to give you a minute as well. This is a QR code just for a mindfulness course. So I find that at the end of, at the end of these sorts of sessions, I can take a breath and think, oh my gosh, that was five thousand things I just asked that group to do. That's really overwhelming and daunting. I do not want anyone to be overwhelmed. So do certainly jump in here, take a mindfulness practice if you have a second. This is a great course, one of my favorites that I find really helpful. And, and think about all the ways that you can start applying what you've learned this week and the last couple of weeks going forward. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. There's plenty of time to do all of this. And you have a fantastic team that are here to support you. You can always come back to them too. So we did have one question um, mm -hmm. regarding a LinkedIn premium account. Uh, yeah. what, are the, what are the tangible benefits of your average college student uh, bumping mm -hmm. up their level of uh, uh, engagement with LinkedIn through a premium account? Yeah, tough question. I'm, I'm biased because I haven't had to pay for a premium account before. So <laughs> I work at LinkedIn, so they give those to me. Um, but the real, for me, the real upside, sorry about my background noise, is um, the in-mail messaging system. So it allows you to be able to send a direct message to anyone. And that's a really great tool if you are applying for roles and you're trying to get people's input. But remember that if you connect with someone, you always get that note space where you can add a personalized invitation note. So as long as you use that the first time and then you do, um, you are allowed to connect with them, then you'll have the option to message them directly. So when I was a college student, I probably would not have been spending that money on a LinkedIn premium account, especially because if you have access to LinkedIn learning, that's one of the biggest perks. Um, but it might be when you graduate from college, if you no longer have access to LinkedIn learning and you're really deep in the job hunt, it might be worth getting a LinkedIn premium account to just get full information about people see who's looking at your profile. If it includes recruiters, that's a great way to start reaching out to people and understanding it. Um, but I would probably hold up while you're still at university, personally. I imagine that someone would get annoyed at me for saying that at LinkedIn, but that's my honest opinion. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Well, very good. Um, well, we are just about out of time. If anybody has any last minute questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, Paige just came in with a question. Yeah. If once you have, if you no longer have access to LinkedIn Learning, do your skills and courses disappear? Absolutely not. That's super important. Um, no. So, if you, when you do go into LinkedIn Learning and you take a LinkedIn course, then you post it to your profile. You will always have access to your learning history. So anything that you post on your LinkedIn profile, even if you lose access to LinkedIn Learning, you will not lose any of those certifications that you posted there. And if you, um, if you do leave and you still have your LinkedIn uh, profile connected, whether or not you have access to the premium content, you'll always be able to see your learning history in LinkedIn Learning. And it is worth noting that a lot of our courses that are based around job hunting and that kind of thing, they are publicly available now. And especially during a lot of the unemployment that we faced um, during the beginning of COVID, we made a lot of those job hunting workforce development courses available free of charge. So you'll still be able to see some of those courses once you graduate. 
Um, but yes, that is a huge upside to making sure that you connect your LinkedIn profile with your As We Go LinkedIn Learning profile so that you don't lose those courses. Same thing for the skills, by the way. So as you take a LinkedIn course and you start gathering skills, you'll drop them directly into your profile. None of those skills disappear either. And you can curate those later. If you think, well, this skill actually isn't super relevant to the career I want to go into, you can always get rid of some of those later and re-add them when you need to. Really good question. Thanks, Paige. Outstanding. We'll give it another uh, minute here. If anybody has any last minute questions, pop them in the chat. I have a question for you, Gary. Right? The, the uh, link that you posted with the post your comments, is that some kind of survey? Otherwise, I have a survey here that I can post as well. Uh, no, go for it. It's an Instagram that we're asking students to pop into. Awesome. Yeah, it's all those prizes are awesome. And I think there will be some LinkedIn learning swag coming your way as well. So <laughs> that'll be that'll be prize options number two. Um, this is just a little bit of really quick feedback. It's a QR code straight to it. It's like six questions on Microsoft Forms, including did you attend this session? <laughs> so, so definitely recommend uh, giving us any feedback. It's always really helpful for me. As I tweak these sessions, I love to learn more about what students actually want to hear more about. So otherwise, I have no idea whether it's landing or not. So do please share, share any constructive or positive or uh, any other sorts of feedback. That'd be great. Um, Rianne asked if LinkedIn Learning is LinkedIn compatible for internships. So I'm wondering whether you mean is it compatible for applying to internships? Like, can you apply to internships using LinkedIn? Um, or perhaps, um, oh yes, applying for internships. Um, so if you're applying for internships um, with, so using LinkedIn, you will sometimes be able to apply to an internship if it's on LinkedIn. And um, otherwise, if you don't see an internship that you know exists at a company, then it's definitely worthwhile going to the, the um, website itself and messaging whoever is in charge of those things. There will often sometimes be a line on a website, like on a hiring page of a company. You'll be able to say something along the lines of, um, you know, they'll say, if you think you have a great fit for this company, but you don't see a job that makes sense for you, shoot us a message. That's always a good place to apply as well. Um, for the most part, I would say we mainly advertise for full-time jobs rather than internships, but if they're paid internships, you'll see them as well. Words like um, associate, um, like summer associate, that kind of thing, those will often pop up with an internship option too. And I'm getting a couple of notes about that first question, not allowing multiple responses. So I will change that now, um, but you can just choose one or the other if it's, if it's not working for you immediately. Thanks for the call out there, sorry about that. Not very good at Microsoft Forms, I'll be honest. <laughs> You tell their power users out there, though, they're attending all the sessions. So. Yes, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is a good problem to have. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. Um, so, Sarah, uh, another fantastic session. Thank you so much for thank everything you. Uh, you talked about tonight. And um, thank you all uh, to, the, uh, to the participants. I uh, really appreciate you showing up. Um, don't forget to check out next week's exciting programs. I think we're going to pop that in the chat. We're going to be focusing on what employers want, how to bump up your skills in the right direction, how to find internships, how to find jobs. Uh, we've got, uh, as well, a wide variety of day sessions. These are online events where alumni will discuss their career field and how they became successful after leaving Oswego. There's like 10 or 11 of those day sessions, so make sure you check that schedule out as well. All happening next week. Um, and uh, again, thank you everyone for coming. Appreciate your attendance tonight. Hope you learned a lot um, and have a great night. Thank you so much. Have a good one.